I'm just up right now, kind of cruising around. Um, I'm up here in the Marmara area. Uh, we're doing uh, another trip with the Walker Mineralogical Club. And in particular today, we're looking at uh, Marmerton, the old Marmerton iron mine. Uh, so I'm just, you know, I was up way early. I was up at like 3.30 in the morning. Um, I'm just kind of scouting around the Blairton area looking for any signs of the old ironworks uh, because that's kind of connected in a way to what you're seeing at Marmara and uh, not having much luck but it's it's nice it's beautiful driving around it's been a bit rainy on the drive down but let's see what the day brings us check out the tailings pile what a huge pile of tailings um, this is right on the edge of the town of Marmara I mean Marmara Armor seems to have a lot going going for it, but something that's really kind of concerning here is I'm not finding a coffee shop, and it's 7:59 in the morning, and there's nowhere to get coffee. I mean, any civilized Canadian town has at least a Tim Hortons or something like that. So I'm going to just cruise around and and see what I can see. I mean, I've got an hour and 15 minutes before we're all meeting at the entrance to the uh, to the quarry. Uh, I'll let you know if I find a coffee. Please tell me I can get coffee here. Oh, guys, guys, look at the sign. Can you see that? Look. Yep. You got her. I've changed my opinion. It's not such a bad place. The, the big thing is when you're walking on the edges of the piles and so forth, or rolling rocks down, really be careful. Have a look over the edge. Make sure there's nobody there. And a lot of these rocks break with a very sharp edge to them. So here are some that I've, I've chipped out, but you're giving, there's still stuff to <laughs> chip and you can oh, etch crystals. Out. Nice. You can etch it out, yeah. but uh, sometimes well, I, I prefer to chip it out because you, you get to see how good the crystals are this way. Is this whole stuff you found here? Yeah, these are the energy colors. Fantastic. This is stuff I'm giving away. What do you get? You don't find it. You don't have it. Yeah. So here's some that hasn't been, but you see, these are not the big crystal, right? Yeah. But they're not the shiny like this. Yeah. The calcite here, well, you could break that off, and, and when it's shiny underneath, it comes away cleanly. Right. When it's rough like this, the calcite sticks to it, and you pretty much have to use the acid to, to get that off. So I must admit, now, after seeing those garnets, um, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty excited about this. This is going to be a real interesting trip. Uh, we're gonna, the first thing we're, we're gonna go in, we're gonna sign in um, with with Acon. Everyone's gonna take a stick. Uh, it's one per car, right? One per person. Per person. Per person. Okay. Person. Per person. Everybody gets a stick. You <laughs> will get this sheet with it. Put your name, the number of the stick that you have on it. This is all the stuff from the Precambrian layer, which is the uh, uh, 1.2 billion years old layer uh, beneath the, the Great Unconformity. Um, I was advised look for the calcite, and within the calcite is where you're going to find the really good crystals on the surface of the rock with the calcite covering over it. So the idea is to take the big lumps of calcite, uh, dissolve them with whatever muriatic acid or whatever kind of acid you're using that's not too toxic, and expose the crystals. Garnets, these are what you call dodecahedrons. They look like little footballs in a way. Um, you see the shape up a little closer here. So at this point I find I'm beginning to get behind the actual exposure face here. So if I play it really carefully and keep knocking off this part, um, hopefully I can take that part off in a scab and keep all of these beautiful crystals like that. One thing though, um, this stuff is coming out like actually super sharp sharp shards I actually heard one whizzing past my head it sounded almost like a like a ricochet from a bullet and uh, I, so here's what I've managed to to extract some real nice garnets like look at that shape that's what we call the dodecahedron that that shape that looks a bit like a football right When the rock starts going green, uh, you often find the, the epidote, and uh, apparently this is, a, this is one of the sites where you really do find some high quality crystals of that variety here, the epidote. Um, so I'm really looking around for that. It's usually underneath the calcite. The beautiful gem tanzanite, which was 
uh, put into the market by Tiffany, um, of which there's only one de known deposit that's yielding tanzanite, it's the same thing, just a different color. So the tanzanite is this beautiful lilac color, um, and the epidota is the, uh, the green. The, again, both of them highly lustrous. Um, no, we're not finding tanzanite here, I wish. Uh, but still, uh, you know, epidote is a, is a beautiful gemstone as well, if you find it in higher qualities. It seems like there's pockets where you're finding all the really, really good minerals, and then there's other areas that are kind of barren. So, um, you know, once you start finding them, they just seem to keep coming in a certain area. So, just been speaking with uh, Jim, the club president, and we were talking about the zoocyte, and he points out that uh, both the tanzanite and the epidote have the same crystal form, which is this almost like a, a boxy, almost like a shoe box with um, sort of edges that are kind of angled like that, almost like a, uh, a prismatic sort of edge, a prism. So it literally took years to reach down to the level of the Precambrian Age rock where we had all the magnetite. And uh, we're looking here, this is, uh, this is 75 acres in extent, so it's pretty large, uh, the pit. Intermixed with all the Precambrian stuff, you get a lot of this sort of mudstone. So that's probably from, you know, one of these overlying sedimentary layers, you know, the Shadow Lake or whatever. I mean, this, this looks all sort of, this was obviously a surface at one time. And you've got your Shadow Lake. It's one of the few places in Ontario you can actually see it, the formation, uh, deposited by the, um, uh, like a, a fast running river. And then way up top, the Bob Cajun, you've got that under a, a cool, shallow sea. Uh, I mean, they've all got their certain characteristics. Here's a much more interesting view of the uh, Marmerton Iron Mine um, than you would maybe see from looking from the normal viewing platform. Again, I have permission to be here, and I am with a, a mineral club, hence the reason I can film it from this angle. But uh, you know, you can see, uh, there's, there's your mudstone. See that sort of layer right there? That's the mudstone we keep finding up in this, up in the uh, tailings area. Looks like there's some kind of building and infrastructure up there where they used to process the stuff. Uh, to a depth of, I think it's 550 feet. Um, Precambrian rock further down, like way down. Then we've got uh, the Shadow Lake formation. That's what we can see directly above the water. Uh, Gull River, I believe it is, and up at the very top, the Bob Cajun Formation, which has all this lovely karsty uh, surface, which is appearing along the edges of the Canadian Shield, and uh, which is such amazing cave-forming rock. So, um, anyway, I don't know how long it'll be before I'm back here, so enjoy the view while you can. I don't think there's many views like this. I mean, this kind of stuff, it's all coming, all the igneous materials, they're coming down from, you know, like uh, 500 feet down. This is this you would not normally access just by wandering around at a surface deposit. So, I mean, 500 feet down, 1.2 billion years old, really is quite an opportunity here at this, uh, at the Marmer, Marmerton Mine. Um, not something you can wander into. Uh, you need to belong to a mineral club, and uh, you go out with a, a sanctioned visit. Uh, with the club itself and opportunities just endless. No, this is a great deal. So I, I see some nice garnet on the outside of this rock so I'm whacking away. This comes off, that piece fits over top there and, and the more I whacked it, the more, look at this stuff. Like that's, that's some really beautifully formed garnets and quite large. So the rock is obviously full of them. I'm just scared to hit this one because I've already got some nice crystals. Basically you need to know when to cut your losses. So as I am specifically looking for garnet, this is the kind of rock you're going to find it in here. At the Marmerton Mine, you're going to have the calcite within it, which allows the crystals to grow nice and big. And uh, it's basically a pinky sort of rock with black speckles in it. That, those darker speckles are actually your garnet. It's really not crystallized properly, but along the edges of this rock, you will find nice big garnet crystals. So, so as I've mentioned in other videos, um, your shape of the garnet it pretty well maintains its shape. Um, you know, you're going to find them typically in the dodecahedrons. Um, you know, it's it's uh, in the cubic crystal system, so it's all of those 
particular crystal shapes that will come with the cubic system. Um, however, its chemical will change. Um, so, for example, the almondine is going to have iron in it. The pyrope will have uh, magnesium in it. Uh, then you get into the, you know, the uvarovites, the demantoid garnets, a little bit rare, the lovely green garnets. Um, you know, and all sorts of, you know, garnets that kind of just gray area, you know, they've got mixtures of chemicals within them. It's pretty dark. There's probably a fair bit of iron in it. Uh, I don't doubt that. And I mean, that's quite typical based on where we're finding the garnet, which is in amongst a very large iron deposit. And that indicates that it's iron? That there's iron in there, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Nice. Yeah, you go along the fringe, uh -huh. and everything's quiet, and then all of a sudden it just takes off when it's sort of like pure... That was so neat, though. Really, what eh? They, what they were originally looking for in the iron ore. There's another nice fine look at that, eh? So that's not your dodecahedron here. We've got a slightly different garnet shape now. Okay, lots and lots of smaller crystals. Um, as much as it's pretty neat... Ooh, there's some real glossy looking things, actually tending towards orange. Almost like a spessartine kind of garnet. Oh, look at that, eh? Beautiful. Beautiful. So that's inside a seam that I pretty well suspected was there based on... Where was the surface of it? I can't find the surface anymore, but... The surface, you know, with the calcite was kind of suggesting there'd be more within. And sure enough, there's the seam that was opened. Magnetite can come in a variety of forms. At the Bessemer mine, it comes as little tiny octahedrons. In this particular area, at the Marmara mine, um, Marmoretan mine, uh, it comes as rosettes. So, you know, round like this, almost bladed. Uh, and here, here's an example here. Uh, this is a specimen that was brought in. Just the size of this place, it's endless. You could get lost up here. I mean, the roads are just zigzagging all over the place. Um, Generally speaking, that hill is good for orientation while you're traveling around and then off to the left you've got the pit.